there are there are more structures than that. There are tables. There are arrays, arrays. Actually, um, vectors and matrices are, are arrays. Arrays are more general or more abstract. An array is a, a multidimensional structure that of all the same data type that can have more than two dimensions. It can be three-dimensional or four-dimensional or five-dimensional. But a matrix, for example, a vector is one-dimensional, right? It's a, a column of data of which they're all the same type. A matrix is two-dimensional. It has rows and columns. And generally, matrix matrices are regarded as numeric, but they don't have to be. A matrix is two-dimensional, rows and columns of numbers. An array, you can have a three-dimensional numeric array but we're not going to worry about that. You can also have tables. Um, there, are other, there are other types of structures. But before we do that, we need to spend at least a minute talking about types. There's a difference between types and structures. So I've got some slides here, and um, I'd rather, I think you would rather, me too, uh, spend the class time actually executing the code. But these slides uh, trace out exactly what I'm doing. And um, almost everything that's on the slides is in the code, but the slides provide much more explanations, except for this. This slide's not in the code because I couldn't represent it. But note, um, this is a slide that just discusses the distinction or the meaning of a data type and mode. And these are primitive. What we're talking about are the primitive uh, primitive type. Think of a singular element. If you're trying to figure out what a type is, think of a singular element. A letter A, a number 4, the value of true. It's not a structure. It's not several elements. It's just one element. You could think of it as, as a scalar if you want. Sometimes they're called atomic there are atomic types, and there are only um, six. Now, here's where it comp gets complicated. The correct terminology is mode. Mode and um, the mode and type of get get confused. You you find people using the same term for both because there are very actually there's very little distinction between the two. Mode refers really to the way it is uh, um, stored in memory. And type refers to the atomic element, the atomic type. And there are six, we can look at six types. R hat really has six types. There's logical, true, false, you know what that is. Integer, which is a whole number. A double, which is a real number. Complex, which is also a number, but it has it can be imaginary. I have have a, an imaginary component. Character, which is a string, and raw raw has bytes, has computer bytes. It, you'll never see raw in script, but you will see these other ones. Mode is slightly different, and really for our purposes, the only distinction is that mode wraps up both integer and double as numeric, even though there's, there are differences in how these are stored. Um, it, for whatever reason, it calls them both numeric, so I'm not sure why. But um, real numbers are stored differently on computers than, than, than integers and, and also differently from complex numbers, which is why you get rounding errors. You get rounding errors with computers, which often surprises people, but you do. Um, so anyway, this is a different distinct, this is completely different from the structure. And this is also completely different from the class. The class. Each object belongs to a class. Uh, some of the classes have similar names. You have integer classes, and you have numeric classes, and you have uh, other classes that have the same name. So, so there's confusion about this. But just type refers to primitive. 
structure, when we talk about structure, we're talking about this. We're talking about putting elements together. And we'll do the rest of this in code. There aren't many of them. There's only 11 slides. But vectors, matrices, lists, which are your most versatile structure, and then data frames. Okay, so let, let's look at this using the code. And if you want to come back, you can uh, you can print out the slides, you know, if you want. And they accompany the code, I think, pretty nicely. So, okay, a vector is your default basic structure. If you, anytime you create something in R that has data, it it defaults to a vector structure if you don't tell it otherwise. But you and but you can also create you can create a vector structure using a number of operators. Uh, the most common one is the combine C for short. The combine the C operator that you see here. You can also do it using a sequence. The sequence function, SEQ, or just the sequence operator, which is the colon. But the most common is the combine. So I just say combine these numbers, and it returns a vector. Returns this vector. It puts them in a vector. But it, it didn't hang around because I didn't assign it to a variable. If you, if you want it to hang around, you need to assign it to a variable. So here we, we use combine again. And we put the elements 88, 5, 15, and 44 in a vector, and we store it. And you see that now. You see my up here in my workspace. One of the reasons I like our studio. These uh, here are the data sets, and you can pop on data sets. I'm sure I've showed you, shown you this, and actually see them as a spreadsheet, or the the so-called variables. It it populates this, so you always know what's in your your workspace by looking up here. X is numeric. Um, uh, y, I still have Y from the scan exercise. Scan, that was character. Okay, so, so vectors, so a vector, you have these four elements. It prints, it prints a vector or displays a vector, if you prefer, uh, horizontally, like a row of data, but it's really not a row, it's a column. It's a column of data. All of these structures are columns. And a vector, just like any other structure, you can access or address any individual element or any subset of elements using two main approaches, two different but parallel approaches. One is by the indexes or subscripts, if you prefer that term. The other is by the names. You can name each column, each row, in any structure, including a vector. This vector, the name of the column, is x. And currently, the name of each element, there isn't one. The so if it doesn't have a name, if this one doesn't have a name, it has a value, 88, but no name. It doesn't have a name because we haven't given it one. You have to give it a name, but you can. Until you do that, you can only access it using the R given index, which is a number or a subscript. So here, here you see, actually, this is the sequence operator. So if I say X, subscripts, of course, are indicated by brackets. Like most of the operators, not all operators, most of the operators in R, brackets have only one meaning, and that is it's a subscript. Actually, I should, I should backpedal. Um, mathematical operators, arithmetic operators in R, most of them do have more than one meaning, depending on how you're using it, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But, but subscripts don't. Subscripts only mean one thing, and that is you're trying to address something. So here I say 1 through 3 and it, it accesses, returns the first, second, and third element. Note you can uh, combine uh, 
elements of various structures, including a vector to create a new vector with the same name. So here I use the C again, and I take the first three elements of X. I put this new value, this new fourth element value here, and then I take all of X and I repeat it again, and then I just replace X with this new one. So all we did was, I'm sorry, it wasn't all of X, that was the fourth one. So all I did was take the first three elements of X, insert 168, and then take the last one. Okay, so vectors are pretty uninteresting. Vectors are homogeneous. Remember that a vector, if you try and add, for example, characters and numbers to a vector, it will, it will change them. It will try and coerce one to be the same data type as the other. And if it can't do that, it'll just fail. Okay, you can name them. So here we create a vector V, and we look at V, and V is what we expect. Okay, but now we're going to use the names argument. So we're saying the names for V are, are this, Mo, Larry, Curly. And so now when we just either say what is V, it no longer uh, prints the same way. You don't see the subscript. You don't see any subscripts. You see the names. This is a named vector. It's still a one-dimensional array. Vectors are one-dimensional. But the, the subscripts get suppressed. Or you can note the print function actually is the same as just expressing an object. When I say print, what actually happens is it sends, it expresses the object, sends it to the default graphic device, printing device, which is the screen. So it displays it. Now V, so if we, what happens if we try and use subscripts now on V that it's, it's a named object? It works just fine but it prints out, it persists in printing out the names, so you can still reference them by their indexes, but because we've given it names, it's going to show you the names instead. Names are preferred generally, but they, you never disable the ability to access elements by the R native default approach, which is with indexes, sometimes called subscripts, but they're actually indexes. Okay, so that's a vector, homogeneous, all the same type, can be any one of those modes. can be logical, text, uh, numeric, that is either double or integer, but not both. Um, if you try and, if you enter in integers and then enter in real numbers, when you express it, you'll notice they all have decimal places. It'll coerce them all to be a double double in terms of the numeric types, in terms of the, uh, the two most common numeric types, integers and real numbers, doubles are preferred for obvious reasons. Preferred because doubles are better for math, because you can express fr fractions, and doubles actually can, can be used to represent continuous numbers. Integers cannot you can't express one and a half as an integer. So integers have limitations. So when you, if you assign, for example, if you assign a number to a variable, an integer to a variable, if I say x equals one, and then I query the type of x, it's actually a double. It'll make it a double because R prefers num uh, anything numeric to be a double over an integer because it, it's easier to, to manipulate with math and so forth. Okay, well, a matrix, it's a vector. It's, it is a vector, actually, with only one difference. It has a dimension attribute. Vectors have no dimension attribute. Matrices do. So here, if I say A, and I'm using the sequence, to, this, this is an operator like C that will create a, a vector. If I say, what is A, let's say, what does A look like? So A... A is a vector, 1 through 6. It's a shortcut. 